And we're back for episode 21 of the Natty Muscle Radio podcast with myself, Bob Waterhouse, and my co-host, Le- Aaron Bevan. You were jumping in. You was, you was, you was itching because we've missed a week, effectively. Yeah, sorry. No, we haven't actually, because it's been postponed. Like the shows this year. So you know, if some shows have been postponed uh, to the year after, it's basically cancelled. You can't then say in 2021, this is 2020 Grand Prix. No, I'm pretty sure it's 2021. We've just missed it. <laughs> is that so like the European, the football European Championships are still going to are going to be in 2021, but still called Euro 2020. It's ridiculous. Is that because they can't? It's be cancelled it's because no one wants to lose their money. They don't want to change all the merch, do they? That's all it is. Oh, I'm merch. guessing. <laughs> I don't really know. That's the biggest cup of coffee I've ever seen in my life. It's like comedy mug. You'd be. Uh, I'd be wrong because it was actually a green tea. Oh. This is Claire's combo, I believe. Don't know what it is. It tastes green. It tastes tea. Super hydration, yeah. super health. Definitely oh. be up weeing all night. Nice. Was prep. So. Yeah. So um, keen viewers will know that I'm not at home. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like, well, what curtains do they look like? Oh, Café de Paris. <laughs> nice. Does that mug come through with the room? No, the mug. So, one moment. Just fell for a second, Rob. Okay, um, so just my observations on the room, first of all. Optimal posing mirror. Full length. Could No way that's fitting all of your physique. And you'd be able to do quarter turns from the side, just about, but no front on ones. Pretty accurate right now, yeah. Uh, nice artwork in the back. Uh, I guess I'd I zoom in. But, uh, so I've just put the batteries for the controller in the selfie light, and now my TV's turned off. So oh, my- oh, oh. this is the this is an early this is an early light show actually because we normally get an hour in before we have Rob's light show. There we go. Op- optimal Netflix menu lighting. Yes. Yep, that's what it is. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got uh, optimal picture in the background. I'd show you, but I'm pretty sure Kara's just lying on the bed, so let's not do yeah. that. The reason why I got this mug is because this is what you get in hotels in Paris, and I'm not about this life in the morning. I don't know if you can see, actually, that looks well bigger than it is, but this mug fits inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's your, is that your travel mug then? It is now. Uh, All right, um, hope you could have a Mr. Strong one. That's bigger than my prep head apparently it's really yeah and it's about as angular as your prep head as well right now it's called contouring i've had contouring done in the beauty yeah, salon something done so my question before the podcast was going to be is I, I get quite a good diet face actually so i know the answer um but it's not quite where you, it's not I mean, it's, I mean this is about as lever on esque as i think anyone i know does this bit hurt? Because it looks very sore. No, it gets like... I actually had some striations in my cheekbone the other day, which was quite cool. It's pretty cool. Did you see uh, when Frank McGrath had a striated jaw? Yeah, that was cool. Got this. Striations. Looks like Lewis's dog's back leg. That's right. Like, like glute shreds. <laughs> um, and probably still another five pounds to come off pretty much just my face so um <laughs> so it will be uh like the uh full death face by where then five pounds comes off wicked yeah so uh so i'm in france which is uh good france, uh, that's oh, good french people just saying hope there's no french people watching the podcast but yeah uh, tons of yeah, uh, Lionel, Lionel Bayeki is our third biggest fan. Uh, like Lionel Bay- Have we slagged Lionel Bayeki off on this podcast yet? Walrus skin. Yeah, probably. Best Mr. Olympia to never get in condition. And... Shame, isn't it? I like Lionel. I think it's one of Dalroy's favourites as well. He, He's to like, me... It's definitely winning this year. Oh, 16th again. Oh, <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? It's weird because he's the kind of guy that um i've said it before that 
I think a lay person should be able to pick the winner of a bodybuilding show. And I'm pretty sure that if you put him on stage next to, I don't know, any, you know, guys in the kind of like six to 10 range of the Olympia, if you put him in, in that lineup, you put him in like a second call out or something, people who didn't know about bodybuilding would be like, that guy's the best body I've ever seen, ever. They wouldn't be turning him around and going, oh, he's got soggy glutes. <laughs> they went with the oh i've missed these postponed podcasts <laughs> it's true though it's um the it just, just the shape and the size and the fullness is just it's mind blowing but yeah so yeah that's funny cheers at line out by Eki. um very so go on and just very quickly your take on what's going to go oh nice what's this prep treat uh, rose i want to say like passion fruit and strawberry macaroon wow I, I don't know if i'd even well it, actually the texture looks very nice actually it looks like it's like soft and crunchy all at the same time i feel like a bit of a dickhead doing this but i do want to watch this back in like six months time and just see kind of your face as i'm being a twat eating a macaroon i just think it might be quite good yeah, okay, what's this like a double take um my mum makes ridiculously good pavlova yeah oh it's like fucking massive as well filled with loads of strawberries and cream in the middle it's brilliant i'll put a request in put a request in nice cool so uh what i was going to ask you very quickly Otherwise, it will turn into a full podcast, but uh, 2020, Mr. Olympia, yeah. do you think we are going to get uh, a full lineup with international competitors from the UK, Europe, all that kind of stuff? Or do you think that it's going to be um, the American show? Um, so first off, first off, we'll get uh, we'll get a good lineup, I think. Um we it's a predominantly american show is enough for me just to kind of make it like it's going to be brilliant right. so you've got you, you know you've got flex you, you know you've still got flex phil you've got brandon curry everybody who was like last year's mr olympia i don't know anybody remembers that um and then you've got you'll still have um you still have likes of steve cooklow steve and then you've steven sorry steven uh and then you've got people coming up like hunter labrada you know, so there's there's guys coming up in that second sort of tier that, you know, okay, let's say the foreign foreign guys don't get over. That makes that little dynamic interesting. But do I think um, we'll get European and Middle Eastern competitors? All I would say is, um, I think Samson Dowder not getting into Tampa is not a good example. Because from what I understand, I think he tried to fly out quite close to the show. Yeah. Like from what I understand, um, yeah, and I think it's you've got to you've got to be able to demonstrate that it's like a business need uh, getting into the states, um, and and I, and you're always really at the mercy of border control as well. You could get you get there, and the border control guy could tell you not interested. And you how know, devastating would you be doing that flight? Well, it'd be worse to somewhere like Australia, which is like 24 hours, and then going, sorry, we're not on you. And I'm sure there's obviously lots of people who've done that because, you know, flagged up criminal records or whatever. Yeah. And to go all the way back and pay for that flight back as well. Yeah. Is, is it, isn't it Palumbo can't get into Canada or something? As I know he's not, it's obviously close to him, but he can't get to somewhere because of his criminal record from the past. They're just like, no. So, I yeah, I think, I think maybe Samson um, made a, an error in doing that. There is a real ass about way that you can get into the states if you're a UK citizen. So there's loads of key worker stuff. Um, so my dad works in the nuclear sector, and so his business can fly to and from the US because it's quite important. Uh, I don't think bodybuilding falls under that, unfortunately. It's quite important to us, but I don't think it's as important as power um, and health. Chernobyl. Chernobyl, <laughs> Chernobyl drop there, nice melting faces. Um, I've realised that Kara 
Well, I've watched the whole thing of Chernobyl. I've watched all five, but Kara's only watched the first three episodes. And we, if you, didn't we didn't finish it. Oh. And episode four is the really sad one. What's that? Melting Fireman. After Melting Fireman. <laughs> <laughs> Fireman. Uh, oh, oh, oh. They go around. If you haven't watched it. Uh, spoilers if they don't go. Uh, spoilers, spoilers, Melting Fireman and um, sad episodes. Anyway, plug for uh, Sky and Chernobyl. Um, use code Rob10 for nothing off Sky. Um, I think I think that if um, so if competitors, I can see the likes of William Bonnock and Rami and this um, the countries that are not allowed to travel into the states. You can go somewhere and so, for example, the UK. Why? Yeah, if you've been in the UK for the last fourteen days. You can't travel to the states, but you can go somewhere else for fourteen days, and then come into come to the states. So it depends how how you do that. Someone like Rami, you know, has the capacity to be somewhere that he can then directly travel to the states. And even when he gets to the states, if you have to quarantine for two weeks, can still train. You know, it, it's the the kind of money that those guys have are able to do that. And so I, I think it's possible for the top guys. Do I think someone like um, Samson. Samson or let's say J uh, James Hollinshead wins Spain or uh, I don't know if you know it's um, top three now qualify for the Olympia at the Spain show. All that. Yeah. Not so Russell Report put it up, didn't they? Yeah. Um, you know, so does the guy in Europe that finishes third in the you know Alley County Pro, does he go the Olympia? Does he do all that rigmarole to get into Olympia? think you'd have to wouldn't you especially if you're kind of like you know unexpected like a Dwayne Walker yeah you know what I mean who's like you know it's not really a name yet but he's obviously got a good bit of notoriety from the show that he did and mm. yeah it could easily just be like yeah let's just put our eggs in that basket and yeah. do that I mean obviously sure. he's already American but I mean someone who wasn't same short, answer, short answer is I think we'll have a good lineup there will be people who can't make it but those that Put the effort into making it. Those who put as much effort into getting there as they do the prep will get there. You know, um, Dwayne Walker. Do you think he is this year's um, Patrick Moore? Hmm. Good question. Um, I still can't believe he was that overlooked from the show. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know the third's not really overlooked, but it it's. It's like a try and he beat, he beat Ian in a lot of shots. What's that? He beat Ian in a lot of shots. And what bothered me about it was the defense seemed to be, oh, but when he turned to the side, Ian's side leg was far better. It's like, all right, what else was better? Nothing. <laughs> you know, so in the morning. I get the comparison, though. I think that was, I say, you can't really judge bodybuilding shows that way, unfortunately. And if there ever does, then it's like, it's clearly that it was on purpose. Because right. people can go, oh, top two there, that good, let's send them back in the lineup. It was never, like, do you know what I mean? You've at least got to give them a comparison. And then if it happens, you're like, right, okay, then maybe I did get blasted. But otherwise, you've at least got to give them a look before you then do that. Yeah. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a Chris Edge 2018 Northern. <laughs> one, one comparison, send you back zone. See ya. Because you've won this show. <laughs> See ya. Best thing ever. Yeah. So, not been there. So I'm saying, yeah, like I've done it. <laughs> definitely haven't. Funny. Um, yeah, it's it's a head it's a head mess up though when you're on stage because you don't really think they're sending me, but they think they're sending me back because I'm no longer in this call out because I'm fifth. Right. It's, so it's like well, worlds. I've been moved to the sides. Out. I'll just get him out of there. It's good enough to win. Let's see second, third, and fourth. But if they move you to right to the outside, you think, "Oh, what do I not deserve to be in the middle?" See no. ya, and then you're like panicking. So, I've seen it, yeah. And the more, but I think the more you see it, though, and the more learned you get, you understand it a bit better. And I've been sat. Sorry, learned. I love that word. Uh, cheers. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I think um, you. I've been sat. I've been sat in uh, watching bodybuilding shows with people who maybe go a bit less, less learned, um, and 
I, I'm really like, oh, why, is, why has he got moved out of here and stuff? And you're like, probably because he's won. <laughs> they can't be bothered looking at him. Do you want it? You know, because it can be distorting, can't it? Because you can see someone who's clearly yeah, the winner. It's be, especially if you're, if you are judging everything's really, because like it matters for a start where people fall between like two and six, for example. And sometimes when you're then comparing everyone to the winner, it's actually just a lot easier just to concentrate. It's like right, okay, get them out of the mix because. I need to see them two side by side, but that person in the middle is like distorting everything all the right. time. So actually, it's, it's at it. break it down. Yeah, it's like someone else can just like throw everything else out. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Cheers. What about then? Um, completely backtracking on the fact that I think there'll be non-American athletes. What's your only American Olympia top six from this year? So nobody else gets in. No Rami, no Bonac. I mean, there's definitely no Hadi this year. I mean, how that happened last year, I don't know. But since then, there's been a, a, a cold war with Iran and a virus pandemic. So there's no way that Hadi's getting in this time. Yeah, but, it, but Hadi uh, won, so... Hadi, get, Hadi gets... <laughs> what Hadi won? <laughs> and we, might get another sick, we might get another sick video where he's uh, shitting himself at the airport. Well, all, um, American, all, all American resident top six. Not sure if you know the inside information. Um, Donald Trump's been doing FST seven. Is that right? Videos, uh, in his in his bathroom. So uh, he's got a direct link to uh, to Harney to get thing in. So have you heard it here first? Okay. Um, I guess anyways, we could say, you know, I guess we could say uh, North American. I guess we said North American continent because Canadians seem to be able to get into America because right. Ivan Valier. Uh, Phil and Brandon, obviously. One, two, or? Phil, Brandon, Flex Lewis, top three. That's all I have to say, really. Um, <laughs> no, I think beyond that, beyond that, oh, it's hard to think of people that would actually be in the show who are at that level, if you know what I mean. The Cedric break in this year because... Nah, just shits himself when he gets to the Olympia all the time. Shits his pants. Just can't peep for it. Give him the Arnold. He's great. He's but, um, they just like to talk about him because it's like, oh, I could just, he could put it together, but it's like it's like the Lionel Berkey is. Yeah. He's good to put it together, but the likelihood is if you go on previous track record. It's a funny yeah. thing with bodybuilding, isn't it? It's like, oh, yeah, but this year, and then it's like, oh. He's there again. Just, just whether it's like whether it's a genetic component, whether it's uh you're not trying hard enough, whether it's like I said, like the big Rami scenario where it's like you just don't look, even though you're like, you know, your face is in condition and it's supposed to be the best year you ever be, and then all of a sudden it's like then you're yeah. still that little bit soggy in areas. It's like mm, there's something that's going on, you know. I think Cedric number one, Cedric's definitely affected by what we spoke about on previous podcast and can we just say that if anyone who watches um, bodybuilding and bollocks and listen to Ivan Valier basically verify everything that we said so cheers oh cheers cheers, cheers for being best at podcasts in the world <laughs> um, is I would say and I've heard it a few times from Cedric when he talk, you know, when he does this Arnold likes me or Arnold loves me I'm, I'm Arnold's favorite and stuff like that I think he almost feels like well i'm not getting i'm not going to be one of these guys that gets in like rock rock hard condition because that's not my Falling. look mm. do you know what i mean it's, it's like it's almost like he's like oh well i'll be the guy that's the golden era a little bit soft but really round guy and it looks incredible when he's check when he's when he's doing his check-ins and when you see him elsewhere stuff like that mm. and he looks incredible on stage but it's not it's not how it's judged yeah you know so, I think you kind of missed that. Rodan, yes or no in the show? No. No, I'd say no. I don't see how they, I don't see how, how how they fix the legal problem between now and then during in the, in the current climate. Yep. Um, so that's annoying. Um, who else then? Give me some more names. Stephen. 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 I think Stephen just rolls along. Well, he does because he. I mean, by default, he moves up because we're talking no Rami, no Rolly, no William. 
there's a big chunk of the top six that aren't going to be there if that's the case, if we're talking North American, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe we'll keep that for an Olympia preview then where we've got all this to compare us. Okay. Because it's all just what if. But yeah, I think that it will still be a very good Olympia. It's going to be the best because we'll be having an Olympia party with a Domino's pizza more than likely. Yes. Um, we'll probably, probably do a goggle box episode and just film I'm thinking, it. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking goggle box. Also, we might do a, a couple of lives on the Instagram watch along for the three people. The three so people that technology the, in this camp. The three so. people that are awake. That'll be you, me, probably QE Delroy. Baz. That might be a bit of it. <laughs> no one else will be on it. Everyone else will be watching it in the morning like normal people. But yeah, I agree. Let's do proper um, preview when we know more. But I'm just saying that I can't wait till they call Flex and Phil in the middle. Yep, agreed. Come on, Flex. Good video on JTV. Day yep. Flex in the Life, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flex in the Life, Day in the Life. Just made up his own title for him. Flex um, walking as well. He did the Flex walking though, right? Because he does Jay walking. So he, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. I enjoyed that. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Good. Um, how far are we in? 20 minutes-ish. Because we we uh-huh. talked about it for about eight minutes before. So. Okay. Any more news? Any more gossip? Hair is rather long. It's definitely got longer. It has, so it, actually. that vitamin D3 that you've had or something. It's just full long now. Um... Oh, you do. You were holding back a story, I think, about your optimal hair. Um, wow. Okay. Decisions to make. So, do I have it cut before going on stage or not? As in, when I say cut, I mean back into a fade, or do I keep it like it's starting to curl at the bottom? I'm not sure if I can help, if I can kind of cope with that. Like, side profile. Okay, so maybe I'll put an Instagram poll up. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll get the viewers' yeah. opinion. And then Claire probably undoubtedly <laughs> cut your hair. Well, that's it. Is you'll put a poll up, and then what will happen is you'll you'll do what Claire tells you to do anyway, because I would do the same. <laughs> I, would do. I thought so, you'd say, do what I want anyway, but yeah, I'd probably just do what my fiance says. Well, I think uh, that. From the front, it looks very much like you've got your hair back in a ponytail because it's so optimal from the side. Now it's so drawn back that it looks like you're doing optimal, like pirate sort of ponytail thing going on. So that's good. But um, yeah, we'll put it out to the viewers. Um, can on on the hair segment, hair segment of the podcast, oh. we are coming up on. Pretty much 11 months this weekend since I last had my hair cut. Wow, 11 months. That's pretty good dedication. Yeah. It's, it's that whole thing of it's like, it's starting to piss me off because I wear hats 90% of the time, really. Yeah, yeah you do. And, you know, it's like, they've been stri- my hats have now been stretched because of training and getting like, a wet head and then obviously yeah. having more volume but my head is shrunk because of prep so it's kind of like a I'm not sure if anyone else has this but my head shrinks so much it's ridiculous your head is also tiny anywhere it is it's it's <laughs> <laughs> just in comparison like when i put my head hand on my head it is. It, it's hilarious, but it gets smaller. But um, so, if anyone wants to know, in a fitted hat, I'm like a six, seven, eight, which is basically the one above child's, I believe. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So that's a good fact that no one knew about me, unless you, well, unless you know me, I guess. You know me. Cheers. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, and cool. So. So yeah, so we had a good, you know, you come up with a good talking point for this week. Um, we're going to talk about... Like I do every week. Eh? Like I do every week. Like you do every week. Like I put the podcast up and then five minutes later I get a voice note with next week's podcast topic. So thanks for that. 
I bring the bants, you bring the topic. So. Yep. Cheers for not being funny whilst on prep, as Claire told me the other day. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes in um, however many, what, maybe 18 months or two years' time when I get back on stage, maybe, and uh, see oh, if yeah. I'm not. You're going to be so unfunny and I'm going to be ridiculous. Yeah, it's going to be we're great. So <laughs> fat and happy. So. Um, all right, yeah, so your topic was good. It is about overdieting, underdieting, and we want to talk about flat full as well. Uh, and kind of the differences between that. Uh, we also were going to kind of, as a little prelude into that, um, a few people had messaged this week um, talking about a competitor, popular competitor in natural bodybuilding who um, has made massive improvements and is claiming a quite a quite a large off-season gain in muscle. And we, we thought we might talk about that because we had a few people kind of a little bit confused, um, not sure, and kind of, yeah, I really wanted to ask you about it um, because I know that you had a, a similar experience when you made a big jump. Mm-hmm. Um, but our opinions on whether we think um, we're kind of, you know, we're talking it's actually muscle. Uh, so for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about, it's, it's AJ Morris. And um, one of his recent stories is that a claim to make like 15 to 20 pounds uh, muscle gain in the off season or stage weight in the off season. Um, um, how many years was it? Was it two or three? It would be three, I think, because it was 2017 right. to 2020. Uh, and the first thing we were going to say, we we're going to preface it by, uh, if anyone hasn't seen um, the progress pictures, um, the guy's made incredible strides in three years. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, I think it was, i seen a comment, it was Chris Edge actually commented on one of his posts, it looked like a boy to a man. And it really does. It's like filled out in such places that um, quads are thicker, upper body's thicker, back is so impressive. Um, but um, I think I think a few people were, I don't know what the word is, confused as to the kind of the numbers that were thrown about. So we thought we'd maybe just have a chat about what we think you can really do in an off season, and, and you can speak about what you've done. So yeah, so I said without. Um... Yeah, what what we didn't want to do was when we talk about things that, you know, about other people specifically, and rather than try and make like, you know, indirect comments about someone or something like that, it's like it's just kind of like maybe our our, our take on it really. So um as you said, sorry, you're frozen by the way. So there? Oh yeah. There you are, you're back. Hey. So, yeah, so it's just one of the things, like, to kind of, like, you know, people are always call bullshit on everything, I think, especially if someone's actually put in a good amount of work. So I think it's very well documented that, you know, he has been one of them people who has put bodybuilding very much top priority over everything else, which is fantastic when you when you get the result and, you know, whether it be from, Eating your meals, you know, keeping your body fat in check in an off season, going to bed on time, training hard, all that kind of stuff. So there's like, yeah, eating macaroons <laughs> in off season. So, um, so yeah, so first of all, like, as we both, well, as you just said and made it very clear, I think it's by any means, it's not a, a dig. It's just kind of like a take really on it. And so I think just, before you, just before you carry on, I'm not sure. I think you were saying it when it broke, when my signal broke up. Is um, what we want to be able to do is talk about things going on in natural bodybuilding without it, without it sounding like we're having a dig all the time because we're not, you know, we're impressed by the improvements that AJ has made, but um, we wanted to talk about you know the yeah. kind of stuff around it without it being a big issue, really. So, yeah. Yeah. so I think that. Um let's use this as an example first because we've got two sides to my kind of take on it I guess really so the first one would be is that even heading towards shows this year it's quite clear to be kind of where I need to be I'm probably going to need to be as kind of light as I've ever been within the last five years or so that makes sense yeah so 2016 and 17 anywhere around the 74 to 7 well 73 to 75 kilos i'm in shape so that's kind of like world finals level arguably you could say that you have to maybe sacrifice a little bit of muscle in areas to get certain other areas in but 
if you want to be crisp top to toe, sometimes that's the, you know, and condition at all costs kind of approach, then sometimes then that's the sacrifice you're having to make. So there's one point, first of all. So in the last 2013 is when I'm on a pro card and I'm now lighter than that. OK, so you could say from the last six to eight years or whatever, I've never not really gained any stage weight. OK, so whether you could make the argument that, OK, you're a little bit older, all that kind of stuff. But the quality is better each time. So I think that's important to know, know you know, looking at like, you know, a picture from 2013. It's a different bodybuilder completely. Yeah. Detail, yeah. hardness, you know, fullness, all that kind of stuff. So you get better at that. But on the flip side, when I made the most progress in stage weight was from being 2009, 2010, I had to make 72 kilos, which for the lightweight class. And I was 71.5 in 2009 and around the same 72 on the button for 2010. Now, to get to that weight, I had to do lots of cardio. I was eating very, very low carbohydrate diet at the time. And 100% I had to sacrifice a lot of muscle to kind of make that weight class. Now, when I competed uh, in 2013 to win my pro card, I'd gone to 76 kilos on stage. 76.7, so nearly 77. So we're talking, that's nearly 14 pounds of stage weight. Yeah. Now, yes, that sounds like a lot, but if you compare that to an over-dieted, low-carbohydrate diet to a very high-carbohydrate diet, two or three years off-season, at least two, yeah. um, and a different bodybuilder, you know, it's that's where it's most evident that, okay, it isn't, actual muscle you've got a degree of things that come into that equation such as fullness such of non-muscle loss um you know and i think what's important is to look at if it's exactly the same like if it's a show day to show day comparison like with his pictures and stuff arguably could say that you know he's you know as you know a lot fuller as well in these pictures but then his glutes and hamstrings aren't all the way in at this point so if he wants to get those in, he's going to have to probably lose more weight. So then it's not going to be a 20 pound. Yeah. So go on. And it may be as well, the more, you know, the more I think about it as well, is uh, it may be that, you know, AJ's reply might be that actually he claimed that it was 15 to 20 pounds of stage weight. So it's very much like what you're describing. You know, that um, it's not actually all this muscle. And I think that's one of the reasons that I wanted us to talk about it is because a few people had messaged to say, and I think thinking that perhaps down on themselves that they didn't weigh that much more, you know, when they're prepping and stuff like that, and they have made these improvements, you know, and okay, perhaps they didn't put that kind of commitment and work in, or perhaps that they did, but rather it might be an acknowledgement that maybe going for a fuller look this time, or maybe the acknowledgement that, you know, as you say, it's, it's more than just 15 to 20 pounds of muscle gain. And I think that perhaps that, you know, that that's confused a few people that they are thinking, wow, is that really, you know, has that really happened in, in, in that relatively short period of time? I think, you know, you only have to look at a, a 500 gram steak, you know, to see to see kind of what, what that kind of looks like, a, a, you know, a lean, lean piece of meat, you know, to say. Pound of muscle on a frame is a lot. Frame is a, is a lot. Um, and so if you're not make, if you don't, if you've not added 15 pounds, 20 pounds since the last time you've competed, but you've maybe added one or two or none or you're lighter, it doesn't mean you haven't improved either, you know, so it can be quantified in so many different ways. So as I said, like, you know, it, it's one of the things where it's hard to be critical when if someone goes to a show and wins the show. So he won 2017 Worlds, but, you know, he had to do at that time what he thought was going to get his best look. So yeah. bringing glutes and hamstrings in peel because no one else is going to have that. And, you know, you're kind of, you know, as much as it's not a glute and hamstring show, sometimes, you know, condition at all costs will win you shows. So that's the decision that he's made to do that. And on reflection, you could probably go, could have been four pounds, five pounds heavier in the same condition. Yeah. 
So that's five pounds straight away. I said it's not five pounds of muscle, it's five pounds of fullness. But, you know, I think when you've done long contest preps and things like that, you do run the risk of kind of like of over dying or pushing too hard. And you can body can bounce back, you know, five days after the show and you look so much better and you've gained 10 pound. And it's like, <laughs> I should have competed like this. But it's very rare for that to happen. It's like maybe it's uh, people who've, like I've seen a few competitors like last time, last year around and, and you know, from judging them and going, wow they are well over diet they look they would look better if they just went out two pizzas like they just would so that so there's that argument and i think i said it's really important to i said there's lots of other factors which comes into your actual stage weight and it's not just muscle but uh by any means it's not debunking that someone hasn't then like worked hard and done the right things to pot yeah. on stage weight so so yeah for anyone who's kind of just going oh well that's bullshit yeah, but it, it kind of you can you can make the argument okay that's bullshit but on the same side it's really not because it's not it's actually happened and there's a clear comparison between the two yeah. so um so yeah so bar means i think that is a good thing to look at when we talk about the actual subject because that's just a, a point i guess really but um without rambling yeah i think it was a i, I think it was a good it kind of was good timing really because of what we wanted to talk about um which is about under dieting over dieting and being flat or full on stage yeah you know? so i think it segues nicely into it um so so let's start that off then um if someone says to you that guy's like you know really really full is there any like key indicators for a novice that you would kind of point out like what are we talking about when we're talking about flat versus full? Because I've got clients who are like, I don't know whether I'm flat or full. It's like, right, okay, well, let me try and break this down for you of kind of what you should be maybe looking for. So if you've got any, you know, what should we say, bullet points, checkpoints of things that you kind of would like notice the difference between the two. I think probably the biggest one is, and, and, it's, and it's, it's probably the only, and the only one and the most, important one is when someone looks significantly bigger and more conditioned than everybody else and that sounds ridiculous and you know well that makes sense but it's that combination of the two because you can i think perhaps to get a better understanding of it you have to look at the other side of the coin you can be flat and look soft you know yeah or you can spill and look soft but when you're on point blasting full and this and the skin is that tight because it's just the muscle is popping think circa rob waterhouse backstage pumping up no one can beat me it's <laughs> like that <laughs> you know it's um i think like opo 2018 sort of full you know that kind of like real sort of like hard muscle um and i think i think that's the that's the only that's the best way for me really to describe it is just is is that real hard pop from a muscle as well yeah. you know you can see see pure, you know defined muscle groups you know you can see the difference between the oh, delt and the tricep if you have one which i don't i think it's like the way i look at it is if you had a big piece of well a 500 gram pack pack of mints and you wrapped clean film tightly around it that like press against that that's almost like what you would kind of want your skin to be like and therefore then that piece of meat pressed up against it yeah when you're flat if you can imagine like there being like air in that bag so it's kind of like it's like it's almost like a you've not got that like real pressness against the skin and you can see that in certain body parts with certain people when they've got you know good muscle bellies and things like that but it's it's that clear distinction between like saying something being pressed against the skin and a much rounder and, and a harder really well I, if i can be completely self-indulgent and show my difference between flat and full because i think it's a good one because i did a keto prep for 2017 and pure carb coma for 2019 um and what I would say is, as well, kind of talking back to the kind of muscle gain in the off season, I I worked with Johnston up until the beginning of prep, 
So I was actually prepping on more carbs than I was in eating in the off season. You know, I was still eating keto meals in the off season because that's how we structured the diet. And it allowed me to keep, I still was, I mean, you'll see some of the pictures now, I still got really out of shape, but you know, it allowed me to get, keep tighter for longer, but that's for a different conversation is, um, the actual weight gain was mostly kind of like in that peak week at the end because I was so much fuller, you know, doing a carb off season. Now it will be interesting to see that, how that kind of, you know, how that kind of looks, but if I just technology time, Yay. Tech time with Rob. All right. So this one, yeah. I look about 90 year old. Cheers. No, it is. <laughs> So this is so this this is this is flat versus full for me, you know. Oh, I love technology. And I think it's um, difference in weight. Uh, two kilos. Wow. Okay. Why didn't you gain fifteen pounds? <laughs> because of what I just said. Because I didn't. I didn't make. I don't think between these two pictures, what I see is some improvements in muscle size, maybe, but mostly just fullness. Because I don't think I made significant enough differences in the off season. I think because, like, arguably, you could say your legs are actually sharper on the left, but yeah. they're twice the size on the right. Right. Because, right. like, yeah. you, know, you could say, oh, okay, you've got maybe you've got maybe not quite tensor them the same or whatever, but like they're like feathered either side, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then look at the difference in the, in in the midsection, shoulders, pecs, all of the upper body. It's like you you're twice the size upper body as well. Yeah, well, you're a little half, but it's like your legs are hard on the other one, but your upper's not at all. But it's a good example, isn't it? Because, like you say, it's and as I was, as how I was kind of trying to conceptualize it, then that kind of what does full look like? It just it's it's hard and conditioned, and and it's because yeah. Okay, I'm not, I'm not by any means saying I'm the most hard conditioned person in the world, and the right ear and I can still be harder, but you can see in the upper body there. I think I'm as lean on the left, or in fact, as you just described, I'm probably leaner because my legs are harder. But it doesn't look like it because the right. skin's just not seraphane wrapped around the muscle, like you said. Did you see? Do you follow Eric Fankhauser on Instagram? I, and I don't. I don't think I follow him at the moment. No, but oh, you've got you've got to bring up the picture of difference of like three weeks between a diet from over diet. Bring it up. Frank Hauser, F A N K. I brought it up. Is he? Can you yeah. see me? Or? Picture first one, yeah. That one. This one. Okay. Yeah. So there's three pictures, I believe, if it's the right one. Yep. Yeah. So if you, so this one. Combo of lean and full. So the first pick is basically him like spot on for a show. So nice and yeah. full, hard, uh, everything. Else. So go one picture to the right, and this Cal is a week later, I Josh. believe. Jokes calves, by the way. Before we, we you can't look, you can't talk about fun calves with jokes calves without jo jokes calves. Yeah, he said that when he was used to playing football, he actually uh, used to cry about how big his calves were. <laughs> he used to get bullied for him. Imagine having that as a problem. So uh -huh. for a lot of people on this podcast watching them, like Kiwi is yeah. crying because his calves are so small every day. I think so. they could be that big, and you could be crying about that. So this is like a week later or two weeks later, and the diff there's one. If you go to the picture right at the end, it puts all three of them next to each other. So basically, then he's made a little bit of a gain back, and there the last. So he's basically over dieted, got softer, not as full, and then he's managed to claw it back for that third show of the season. And then he's like, I just needed to like wrap it up and yeah, go. But it, that's a clear distinction there between like he's probably no fatter the week after but how much softer does he look in his upper body and that's just like, all, that's all all fullness it's um the, the tell for me really and again lighting and stuff like that but um around this teardrop like the, it, it looks yeah what, <laughs> soft, saggier, you know like it's not like etched like it is here on the left yeah. Uh, and, that, and 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 again the midsection you know that's such i mean it's, it's such a small waist anyway but just a lot of skin and it's and, and that's it it's not that not that you're any fatter when you're flat but you know the skin just doesn't sit as well yeah yeah you know? 
Uh, second good, uh, yeah. point for Aaron's top five bullet points. Yeah, it's actually how the muscle feels as well. Like when you're flat, you generally feel or feel spongy. So I see a seator doing this uh, in the ho in the classic seator hotel rooms would like pull the skin and prod. Right where you are now. Like where I am now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder actually how oh, that that this this might be good hotel room lighting if I didn't have a wider waist than a do quad suite right now. But anyway, um, you can probably use mine. So yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna do. It. Um, but I thought it was kind of. I wondered if it was a seat or kind of like being just a seat or kind of taking the piss a little bit. I thought is he just doing this because it's a video and he kind of wants people to comment on it because it's the kind of thing you do. And then Darren did it to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually whilst we were in the uh, in the prep pad uh, in Perth for finals last year, he's actually just like prodding me to see if we we're full, and we weren't full, so we had some more. And at that point, I was like, okay, yeah, that really, I'd never really witnessed that before until until then, really. So yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I notice it in bicep peak and fronts of my shoulders a lot of time when I'm driving. I'm driving and my shoulders feels really spongy, soft. I'm like, probably a little bit flat today. And then, yeah, lo and behold, usually am. Not that I really get flat that often, to be honest. Is that when you have a, when you have a cheat meal because you feel flat? Yeah, one of them. Cheers for not having a burger since September. No, December. It's probably a bit generous. Not long. December, December we're into Dubai. So, yeah, cheers. Yeah, well, it's and it's interesting you mentioned about not getting flat yourself okay. really anyway what a burger, <laughs> a burger. No. was that actually not got a burger um never mentioned it that much <laughs> uh, <laughs> um i'll show you something in a moment actually it's a good france thing um i'm gonna show you now it's pretty good yep i'll just talk about the uh backroom drapes got nothing much yeah. to say about them yeah so they do these little pre-packaged pure just meat pure meat oh yeah nice Listen. pure pure buff Weef. oh the book. Trans, pure, pure buff translates as pure beef brilliant uh, what is it great what what is it it's like is it already cooked or is it just raw no no, no it's just it's a it's a it's mince it's ground <laughs> meat just into a patty already but it's in little kind of like two little, you know, cut down the middle. You've got two patties. So if you were prepping in France, this is a 15% one because off season, but I've got some fives. <laughs> <laughs> we just get loads of these and just whack them in and they're already like, uh, I think you get I think like 120 grams each or something like that. So, so winning. Wow. Winning at life. Cheers, Cheers France for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> what I was saying before I was distracted by beef is... Uh, uh, pure de boeuf. Pure de boeuf. Um, it's funny that you say that you don't really get that flat because I've noticed. I, I I can see when you're flat because of, I I know what you look like now, but you wouldn't ever look at. I wouldn't ever look at you and go, Jesus, it's like that flat. You know that it's you, you can't see anything. And it's similar with me. I don't know if you remember last year when we had Olympia party at mine uh, when I was prepping. And Darren had said to you, giant stack of toast. When I had the giant stack of toast. Yeah, because um, Darren had said Sorry. to you, toasted uh, Aaron bread. Toasted Aaron bread, very different to toast, yes. Um, Darren had said to you to check up on me and see whether I might need like a refeed. And we we're only talking like a higher carb day. That's all it was, it wasn't Gmail or anything. And I was like, yes. Rob's come in and he's going to be like, oh, you're so flat that he needs like, he needs a burger or something. Yeah. And I paused for it and you were like, hey, you're not that flat. I was like, you. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. I did still have the refeed. Darren thought it was relevant. But I think, I wonder, do you think, because I know that um, even though we're all natural bodybuilding and like carbs, 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 you've met mentioned it before that you 
go really low on everything actually when you're really at the depths of prep whether that be carbs proteins calories in general eating ice cubes meal three um that kind of thing yeah. and i've done before? keto before I, what dust dust eating dust yeah. uh, um, and i've done keto and stuff before i wonder whether um because of that it kind of just I because I, I don't really get that that flat either. I know I've just literally shown a picture of being flat, but you know even when prepping last year and as the calves got up, as the food got a bit lower maybe towards the end, I never really looked that flat. And I wonder whether it's something to do with the body being able to not the body going through a period of not having that many carbs, and so that when they are in circulation, it kind of stays full. Does that make sense? It's just kind of anecdotal. I was wondering because because you you experienced it and I experienced it. I think other people who don't maybe have as like pretty tie-ins will look way like let's say someone can look way worse being marginally flat than what others can when yeah, they're okay. flat. Like depending on the way your muscle bellies are, I guess really. I mean, because we've got fucking incredibly wicked shape. Shape guys. Shape guys. So yeah. Maybe that. I was just wondering as well because um because I know I know Ian Ian Value. Um sorry, Ivan. Sorry, sorry, I, I knew I knew you didn't know I was talking about then because I didn't say his real name. Um his he was doing the Patrick to diet of like seven thousand grams of carbs an hour and seemed like he really struggled to fill out. And I'm wondering because he was so used to having his body had needed such an amount of carbs that it almost just becomes hard to to fill out. I don't know. It's kind of like an anecdotal yeah, thing. I think always the bigger, taller guys. They always talk about are harder to fill out. Yeah, which would make more sense. You've got more muscle. It's like I mean, if I at 165 pounds on stage for worlds had to eat nearly 25 kilos of potatoes to get full in three days um which was about 70 pounds at whole foods 70 pounds on potatoes wow so 25 kilos in three days did you say mm, about that so um on the most recent bodybuilding and bollocks uh who had had a guest on uh just a, a fan had like won a competition and he was a bulk, young like an 18 year old bulgarian lad and he claims that he, on his diet, eats five kilos of potatoes a day. Yeah. And they were like, that's calling complete bullshit. And they, if he filmed it, um, eating the five kilos of potato a day, if he had to put it on his YouTube. Yeah, that's what's that, 500 grams a meal. So you ate? 105, yeah, well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it's, it, it doable on a car but it would do it on a car but but it would be very little out of anything else yeah but you you in them three days then you did over eight kilos of potatoes a day yeah but i say that's just potatoes though that's yeah. all i was eating so oh, okay. one, meal, <laughs> one meal of um chicken at night before bed okay um and the rest was literally every two and a half hours to two hours like three to four hundred grams of potato well, from basically when you wake up in the morning at like six right the way through to like midnight it sucks it sucks yeah. you think, well, it sounds like such fun I mean, you're like obviously you've depleted and then if that whole world of like uh now i'm actually full but then i just want some protein <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny so without getting too far away from it then so that's pretty good on flat and full so let's just go into a little bit more detail about over dieting under dieting well we know what under dieting is like <laughs> because when people rock up to a show and they're like 10 weeks out and they think they look great and you're like eh, you're about 10 more pounds at least to come off and they yeah. to fathom that can't they until they probably maybe get the contest pictures back so yeah so under dying subject wise then it's not always because you didn't try hard enough is it no no no. and I, I think it's it is important to mention it because it's probably for newer competitors as well if you've if you've if you've competed a few times 
times and you're still under dieting. For qualifiers is one thing, uh, that's fine. You know, you, you bring a package, if we're talking about um, natural bodybuilding, so we're talking about shows like BMBF, UK, FBA that have qualifiers for finals. Um, you know, if you're coming in a few pounds over your finals weight because you know that's the kind of plan, then that's one thing. But if you're constantly turning up to your show of the year, whether that be a, you know, whether you're doing that a qualifier or finals, and you're still not bringing it, then yeah, that maybe is a case of either not trying or not having the knowledge to get in condition. Um, but for newer competitors, um, I don't know the guy's name actually, but um, there was a once upon a time training in flex and tone. Uh, there was a guy training in there. He had a really good physique, strong, um, and I, I think I've seen him recently actually on 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 the gram, um, and he was he was saying there was a, an eleven weeks out picture. And I thought, wow, and I know we spoke about it doesn't matter until, you know, you look like how you do on the day. So when you're 11 weeks out, we know what we both look like at 11 weeks out. And then there was a five weeks out and it didn't really look any different. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy's like 18. Physique's incredible, shape and everything is incredible. But you have to ask yourself, it's it's not knowing what actually being in condition is. Because you'll look you'll see lines and you'll see condition that you've never seen before. Let me tell you, the first time I wasn't fat, I thought I was shredded to the bone and I probably was 25 weeks out, you know, because I'd, because I'd, because I'd gone from fat to just not being fat anymore. And I think until you actually have seen it on stage, you've been there yourself or you've got people around you that can tell you, no, you're not ready yet you can think you're in condition or you can think you're ready and you've actually still got 10 pounds because you've got abs and you might have a line in your leg when you've never had a line in your leg before and this kind of thing. And I think that for new competitors is something to, I would say the best advice for that is just always have that second eye. I you remember know. when I got humbled by Chris Constantinou. Do you know Lee and Chris Constantinou? Chris used to train with Nate all the time. Yeah. Probably still does. Um, and we went to the Welsh show and he was, I was talking about, I was probably in one of them ages and experience of competing where maybe maybe done a year, then got fat and then was dieting down. And I was like, oh, you know, it's like perhaps going, okay, I'm in shape. You know, I've got, you know, abs are pretty good in that. So I lifted up my top to show my abs and there was like, you know, a nice little outline of four. <laughs> And then he went, oh, yeah, cool. And then, like, lifted up his top and there was, like, ab crevice Like, you know, where you could get, like, a flipping, you'd probably get this Mr. Strong mug in between the gap in the middle. It was, like, ridiculous. And I was just, like... His ab had an ab. Okay. So I thought, yeah, I thought I was lean again. But really, because I think you, when you're a bit younger and a bit less, how should we say less more knowledgeable on it you know you you when you've put on a bit of weight again and you get kind of a bit lean again you you just automatically think that you're better than you are so i very yeah. much found out the hard way a lot that year for sure yeah i've seen um i think it can happen if you're like like i am and like what you described is like someone that isn't naturally lean anyway you get excited when you first see an ab and you think well i've got an ab now and i've won big one, one real big ab right now but when you get more than one it's exciting for the first time but i think when you're it's like the first vein as well so i'm like yeah. the least vascular person but i think i might have like one in my arm maybe if i'm lucky yeah. like one hose pipe vein but right. like i'm like i've got veins I, hey, I caught i caught one yesterday in the lift because you know elevators are like wicked lighting uh, and i was just like holding a carrier bag and i was like <laughs> jesus <laughs> I'm like 91 kilos and there's a vein. Um, but yeah. Yeah, my old training partner used to give me shit about this because it'd be like training, my legs would be quite lean and he'd be like, it's funny though, because you haven't really got any veins in your legs. You've just got them old blue lady veins in your legs. <laughs> so cheers to vein genetics for having cheers, legs, not a single vein in them. So. Cheers, Maricus veins. Um... <laughs> So anyway, yeah, my point is that what you can also get is guys that are not like you and I that actually have just always had, you know, the guy that like has abs 
and eats McDonald's every day in school. And then they decide to do a bodybuilding show. And what they look like is exactly what they look like when they have abs eating McDonald's because they also think that they are in really good condition just anyway and, and they don't yeah. need to diet. And I think you get both ends of the stick and I've seen that I've, you know, I've seen that a few times. And you also and you see that, you might see someone rock up at a qualifier and then just look the same at finals, you know. And I think it, I think it's that understanding of what it is to be dieted. You know, whether you've done it yourself, whether someone can show you or whether you can see it for yourself. And I think seeing it for yourself is the hardest thing. Uh, you know, see, or seeing someone in condition is the hardest thing. I think you need to do it yourself or have someone just drill it into you. You know, have a Darren who from early on says you're still fat. So keep dieting, you know. Yes, indeed. I think that's a good a good point. Um, so under dieting. So it's not just you haven't tried hard enough because sometimes no. you just don't, you know, you, you maybe need more time being getting lean sometimes it can be a time factor so that you have been maybe being fat in the off season and you've done really well to that point but you've not had enough yeah um and sometimes just a genetic component some people can't get that shredded they just can't you know yeah. and for whatever reason maybe they need to approach their diet differently maybe they need to eat more food maybe they do more cardio so you know it's not they haven't tried they just haven't found yeah. it really yet I would. I, I honestly, I truly don't believe that any. When I say anyone, anyone without an underlying health condition, a genetic, you know, a genetic factor that would be considered like a health condition, I, I think anyone can get in condition. Um, you know, one of the things that stands out to me is um, I won't mention the names because you know they, they they're both keeping it nicely under wraps. But a couple of our friends who kept good condition in the off season and then started prepping this year and our shows have got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back they're just as harder and harder and harder and it makes me think it, it, that kind of aspect of time to get in condition you know it, it, it's a, it is just time it's doing what you need to do it's being in a calorie deficit or however you want to quantify it and the longer you are the better your condition will be and also the better your look will be because the skin will be tighter and maybe then you can increase your food and be fuller like we said you know and i think and that's been interesting this year as shows have been pushed back and people have just been in prep forever you know so i think slightly well it's on subject but off subject but i also think if we talk about the natty versus, in, versus enhanced debate that it's a lot easier for a natural to maintain his physique whilst dieting once he's lean, if that makes sense. Because mm. I would say people who are obviously assisted probably have to do more things to maintain that amount. It's more high maintenance. Right. So you have to take more drugs. Your body's going to get, you know, uh, used to taking those or the amount, the amount of low, like you'd have to put in effectively. So the, the maintenance and the cost would be higher and to also maintain with so much more muscle. Yeah. So as I said, you know, for me, as you could probably run maintenance calories once I'm lean and your body's just efficient at using it and you feel good and it's all yeah. good. But so there's that debate as well. So, um, you know, some people hold it better than others. But So what you're saying is don't, after stepping off stage, go McDonald's, Denny's, five guys and moose coffee in 30 within in 36 hours because that'll make maybe maybe make you not hold your stage condition is what you say how many <laughs> what most amount of weight you've put on let's say in i'd say i'd say two weeks after a show you think um probably about no, 10 kilos. 10 yeah. yeah. Well, I'll raise you there. I did two stone in two weeks, 2009. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, so that's a good, what, 20? What are we saying? What, about 28 pounds? So, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I went, I went bearing in mind, the Abingdon Fair was on. <laughs> the, old, the, Abingdon, the old Abingdon Fair. And this was the year 2009 where I had. I'd gone from 11 stone two 
to like 13 stone two in two weeks. Um, my wrists look pretty jokes. So do my ankles. Well, uh, you know, I think we're after the watershed now, but um, I had a work trip after competing last year. And before I left, I was like, I'd eaten, a, I'd eaten a bit already, so I'd put on a good, probably a good 10 pounds, but, you know, kind of like in the low 70 range, so still looking pretty good and stuff like that. Um, two weeks go by, I come back and I didn't look like that. And Kara was like, where's the guy that went, where's the guy was, that was in shape and was a ball during prep and then comes back and he's just this round round spare the they said you get to enjoy the slim bed meet other man unlucky <laughs> dye his hair or something instead then you can have another boyfriend so uh yeah basically don't don't do that if you want to you know. enjoy the slim bev sweet enjoy the slim bev. nice good that's a good quote of the day good um so over dieting very quickly we did cover it a little bit but let's just um and when we talk about it like you know condition at all costs can cost you you know <laughs> if you haven't got the amount of muscle sometimes to do that because you do then go from sharp 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 you actually get softer yeah as that goes on um i think i think i think time is important as well again so as i just said is you know the, if you can diet for a long time but conservatively you, you you won't see that i think you will just get better and harder and you can maybe you know as part of the diet you can increase food and this and all them kind of things and skin gets thinner it's when you maybe have to cram it into a short time period you're just trying to get that end goal so i me and darren were talking about or oh, when we were when we were prepping it was like, yeah, we're on the money. This is the best condition of a rad. It's great, 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 great. And then once we got off stage and then we seen some of the pictures and we were really happy. And we, I said, yeah, I still could be harder, couldn't I? And Darren was like, well, yeah, I knew you could be harder. But was there any point in being doing what might have, we might have needed to do to be harder during that time yeah. period? Yeah. Is it necessary for that look? And it wasn't. You know, so I, I think that's important. It's um, yeah. You know, it's, it's that again. It's, it's condition at all costs, isn't it? Is anyone can be in condition and anyone can bring incredible condition if you have long enough to do it. But at what point do you go? Okay, I'm going to put the hammer down that hard that maybe I lose this form, yeah. lose this muscle size. So flip side, then being ready too early. Um, never done it. Like, <laughs> what's that? I can't say I've ever done it. So. No, either me, either. Um, if anything, you know, shows being put back and being put back and put back has only helped me. Right. But um, it used to be talked about a lot, and I think the same again, more assisted competitors being ready too early because, you know, it's just like where we, what they've got to do to maintain that physique. But you do tend to find that like, natural guys and stuff, you know, if you're ready for like a qualifier, yeah, it kind of hurts to hold that but i've seen a few a few instances the last couple of years of people who have been really quite far out and then ended up not as hard on show day and it's like what did you do between that time and like and a lot of people like you know maybe giving a few people a, a, a lot of shit on the internet for it but it, it's, i mean it can happen it can ha it can easily happen as well bodybuilding is very funny in the fact that your body's a very sensitive towards that end part yeah. So, you know, unless you're backing off cardio, up in food, doing that, it, you can easily get softer. And just because you you spent so long being lean, it's probably, you know, a, a feed up, you know, could sort you right out, but you, you're almost not going to do it. You know, it happened, it happened, we've seen it a lot. Uh, it happened at finals last year, that, you know, competitors that um, won qualifiers, um throughout the year that then then fell out of the place in the, at finals you know and they and they were rock hard at you know qualifiers and just a little bit off at finals 
and not any less lean, not any less yeah. Yeah. conditioned per se. But yeah, just, you know, maybe that trade-off of being hard at the qualifier, maybe it hurt or maybe maybe it's just de- learning with how to deal with that, you know, and I've never had that problem, so I can't really, it's not something I could really give advice on, but, um, you know. Cheers, fat kids. Cheers, being fat, so can't help. So if you're if you if you are, if you are one of those people that comes in condition too early at qualifiers, um, find another podcast because neither of us can help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think on that note is a great time to wrap it up. But yeah, uh, pretty comprehensive, I think. Yeah, I think we kind of stuck to it with some tangents and talked about the four things we wanted to. Well, wicked. Very good. Right then. Um, hit us with the punchline. Natty Muscle Radio. There's always another level. Hey, see you next week. Next week. <laughs>